how many of you were here yesterday when I talked? So, a small number, uh, probably about 30 percent. Uh, uh, don't worry, don't be too much duplication of yesterday's talk, so there would be new material. Uh, just wanted to uh, let you know I have enjoyed my, my stay here. It's a great institution, and the education that the students are getting here are really second to none. So, really, congratulations. Uh, the, the sort of uh, uh, intermixing of the theory and practice that goes on here is really unique and uh, you should be proud of what's going on in this institution. Uh, yesterday I talked about uh, certain aspects of uh, AI, which was really uh, to think about uh, how AI has changed our lives, what are the challenges. Today I want to take uh, a step even further up at the higher level to look at what are the major challenges, research challenges. Now, I know many of you are first year students, uh, some are fourth year, and so uh, the question would be really how does it apply to you? Hopefully what I'm going to talk about is going to motivate you to think about research in your future career. It's going to have the problems that you can associate with. I'm not expert on any of these problems or any of these research. Uh, what I did was really to look at uh, the national challenges based on U.S. Uh, perspective. Many of those are similar challenges in the Indian perspective. So it's really, uh, uh, you know, th those are global challenges. And then I looked at uh, what's going on at my own university. How are we trying to solve some of those problems? I will not go into the details of the solutions of those problems, but I'll just describe what kind of work is going on. And then towards the end, I'll talk about one of those challenges in a little bit more detail. And that challenge really is, uh, and I mentioned that yesterday as well, uh, the challenge is really given this amount of data that we have today, given the amount of publications that we have today, Given so many papers, scientific papers and others that are coming out, in addition, of course, there's a lot of information that you get through your Google. How do you make sure when you're doing research that something has not been done? Or how do you make your research go faster? Right now, there's no tool to give you all of that. So I'll talk about some of the research in that domain that's going on. It's, a, it's still a field that's not sort of... Uh, anywhere maturity, but at least you think about when you do the research, how you find out the information, what kind of problems that you might encounter. So that's kind of the plan for the talk, and it all depends on, you know, I know the afternoon sessions are a little boring, you know, some of you might go to sleep, and uh, so, so I'll, I'll try to keep you awake, you know, and uh, the worst is if I go to sleep. That would be the worst part. So I, I want you really to be uh, awake. This is the last session uh, for the day. So, so, so some of you are in, in a hurry to get out as well. So uh, I'll, I'll not let you go away early. You know, so, so make sure that you, you're here. Uh, but at the same time, really think about this. And I said that yesterday as an as a interactive session. And uh, the more questions you ask, the more answers might, uh, the more things I might be able to, to tell you. Otherwise, it's going to be a very dry run for you and, and you might get really bored and go to sleep. So, uh, so, so please, uh, uh, you know, it's small enough uh, audience that I can see all of you uh, to think about uh, before you go to sleep that I'm really looking at you. You may not know I'm looking at you, but, but I'm looking at you. So look at the, uh, some of the grand challenges in engineering in 21st century. These are, there's uh, something known as the uh, National Academy of Engineering. Uh, in, in, in U.S., and they have members from all over the world, but uh, they wanted really to, to say what are the major challenges. And they define four cross-cutting themes. So sustainability, and in, in, in this conference, we have actually days for water, energy, those kind of sustainability issues are important. So it's no different whether you are in U.S. or here. I mean, those are important issues. Health is a very important issue. Health, uh, definitely quality of life depends on health. Uh, the health 
really is something that uh, impacts all of us, whether a child, a young person, or older people like us, but it does uh, impact everyone. Security is another important issue, and actually security has become even more important because of the new part side of the security, that's the cyber security that we are concerned about. So, so information about us that's being collected and information about us that might be sold to somebody or that might actually harm someone. So, so security always is important and in fact it's very important in India for a long time but put another dimension to that and the cyber security comes as, as one of the themes. And then finally really we should be enjoying what we do. You know, what is life without joy of living? Even as a student, if you don't enjoy what you're learning, if you're really bored in every class you go to, what's there? So I think it's important for people to have that joy of learning, whether uh, it is really the quality of life, so you can think about that health issues are related to, to joy, you know, joy of living, or uh, whether it's really uh, infrastructure that provides you a better living condition for all of us. So they're all related actually. Those are four cutting themes. But if you look at the, the, the different uh, topics that they talk about, and I, I'm not going to talk about all of that, but we have quite a few of these uh, topics that we'll talk about. So making solar energy economical. Big effort in India as well. We have so much solar power here. You don't have to, to be as, as uh, this, this morning there was a talk about uh, uh, energy and the talk was about uh, how do we get energy from more sustainable sources as opposed to the carbon based sources that we get energy and the solar energy is really one which is free, everybody can tap it, but how do we make it economically feasible? That involves really a lot of work uh, from uh, electrical engineers, from uh, uh, chemists, from material scientists people, from computer scientists, all coming together to provide that bridge. It is something not one group can solve the problem. You know, virtual reality, how do we enhance our reality? And that has lots of applications. Whether you think about uh, uh, operating theater for, uh, for the uh, surgery, how do you enhance your, uh, uh, your uh, sort of grasp of the reality, through the virtual uh, reality, or whether it's uh, defense and, and war zones and things like that, how do you really enhance uh, the, 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 your, your combat uh, uh, situation? Uh, one of the things that really is uh, very interesting this morning, there was a talk about, uh, again, uh, can, you know, the same talk I gave yesterday, point was can the, can the machines think, right? I mean, the, the shooting uh, test actually for the machines. And similarly, can we really at some level reverse engineer the brain? Can we understand how the brain works? If we can do that, then we can probably prototype it. I think we are many, many years away from really reverse engineering this, but, but that's something that's going on. And how do we get better medicine? This is something that actually is uh, uh, important because uh, the medicine usually is created for the population. Each one of us is an individual with totally different DNA and totally different makeup in terms of how our body would react to a medicine. Something that might work on you for the same symptoms may not work on me. So that's medicine. Advanced health informatics, this is really important, a lot of data in the health domain. Public health is so important. You know, you think about the, uh, the viruses that go around. Think about infectious disease. If we can understand that through the data, hopefully we can control it much better. So, so really, again, this is the joy of living. We can get better quality of life as we go along. Uh, one of the things that, uh, uh, you know, th there was a project actually that uh, President Kalam had uh, uh, I had started here about uh, eight, nine years ago, ten years ago probably, while was called providing the urban uh, 
uh, spreading the urban uh, facilities in the rural areas. I think he called that Pura, providing urban infrastructure in rural areas. Question is, as the urbanization is going so fast, the infrastructure in the villages are not good, and so how do we create good infrastructure in the villages? And I come from village, actually, in India, a very small village, and I understand that firsthand. People are moving away to the cities because there's no infrastructure for them and their families. Infrastructure also includes the schools and so on, but really how do we provide the infrastructure so people can live without leaving the places that they are uh, at where the roots are and still be successful? Because people want to be successful. So how do we provide and restore those environments? Uh, this, this is something big. We have been talking about this for a long, long time. You know, how do you use the fusion for energy? Don't worry about it. I'm not going to talk about it, but that's one of the challenges. Of course, we, we all worry about the cyber security. And one of the very important problem really is access to clean water. This morning, uh, uh, we, we were talking about access to education in one of the sessions the same as access to water, although in many cases we pay more for access to water than we pay gasoline in certain countries. You know, one liter of gasoline might be cheaper than a liter of, uh, of, of water, pure water. So, so water really is a very scarce commodity. The question is how can we clean it and we can, how can we clean it in a way that it's really efficient? That's very important. So that's really one of the, 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 the uh, uh, the, the major challenges, of course, we all concerned about uh, uh, the nuclear power going in wrong hands. How do we manage that? Uh, the, the other part really is, uh, and then nitrogen cycle and so on. But here, actually, as we produce more carbon dioxide, as we burn our fossil fuels, how do we sequester the carbon? If we can find a cheap way to sequester the carbon, then probably we are in good shape. Our environment is not as polluted. Are there ways really that we can improve the environment by taking care of the bad stuff and putting it somewhere that it doesn't affect us? That's a very, very uh, important problem. And this is something that has been showing up. Uh, we all learn at a different speed. You know, some of us might learn a subject much faster. You know, some of us might feel that mathematics comes to us like this. But when we are presented chemistry, we might be much slower. Anybody who is uh, slow in chemistry? I am, actually. So. Uh, so, so the point is that we all have a way to learn. Can we create environments where we learn at our own pace? And this is especially true with challenged uh, handicapped children. How can we, they can learn. It's just that we want to force them to learn at the same speed. And they are capable of learning as much as we are. The question is, can we teach them in a way that they can we personalize the teaching? And there have been some, some work where people have looked at uh, you know, starting with interactive teaching based on your knowledge, you are given the next lesson and then you are tested again and go on. But this involves a lot more than that. And, and, and basically our goal is to make sure that every child is successful. And in order to do that, we have to think about where the, uh, the, the, the disadvantages might be and how do we make that really a learning experience. And that's a very important and, and a social issue, not just in terms of technological issues. And the last but not the least, as you look at information technology, computer science, we know that we can use the tools to do new discoveries in science. How can we use the technology that's given today? Uh, there was a talk by the Nobel laureate uh, yesterday that talked about some of the experiments that he was able to do in the laser wasn't possible 50 years ago because the technology has advanced. And now the experiments that they can do at one atom level with computers and all that wasn't possible before. So the technology itself actually improves the quality of research, the speed of research, 
the questions that you could not answer before, you can answer using technology. And one of the examples that I'm going to give you later on is really how can we use technology to accelerate the speed of discovery? You know, how can we really get people the information faster so they can create new knowledge faster? So, so this is really a kind of list of things that is important in terms of the, uh, the, the current challenges that exist. Now we, as I said, at, 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 at Buffalo we have uh, many of these uh, challenges that we are addressing. Some of these acronyms has no meaning to you. So for example, what we have done is we have created some special research groups that are trying to address some of these challenges. For example, we have a center we call it Renew. This is the uh, research center in energy, water, and environment. Now, Buffalo is uh, located uh, uh, at the uh, edge of two major lakes. There are five major lakes in North America. And these lakes have tons of water. But water is not guaranteed to be seen there. The first electrification was actually in Buffalo power coming from the, uh, the major dam at Niagara Falls that creates power that comes to, to the city. So there's energy there for a very long time. And, and, and then the environment, they have been, because the water was plentiful there, the energy was plentiful there, a lot of the companies, especially chemical companies 100 years ago, 150 years ago, they made their base there and polluted the environment. And that's true everywhere. You know, if you go to city like Kanpur, where uh, you know, it was one of the major industrial towns uh, before independence, really, really major industrial towns, a lot of things are polluted. And once you pollute that, it goes through your water and everything is polluted. So the, 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 the issues are national, international, but we feel the issues are local. This is, uh, uh, the gem is something known as uh, genome and microbiome. You know, we have lots of lots of bacteria with us. And we try to kill them. People have found now that not all of that should be killed. You know, they, they want you to eat more yogurt now so you can get some of that with, with your food. It's good for your tummy, it's good for your health. The more genome data in your in your gut and your body than your own genome data, you've got substances in your body, you got foreign objects in your body, foreign life in your body. And we got to understand that because the coexistence is environment, in the coexistence is very important and actually they keep us healthy. So we have actually a, a group of people looking at that. Uh, we are also trying to solve some of the manufacturing problems using the technology. Advanced manufacturing, whether it's 3D printing, whether it's other things we are really using that's also a quality of life issue. And, and, and so, so there are multiple of these centers. There's a global health equity. So go, you know, there's good health care available, but there's so much disparity, not only in India, but right there in Buffalo where we live. There are sections of people who have very little access to good, good health uh, good, good healthcare. The question is how do we provide good health care to masses? And that's a very important issue. Actually, our, our research team works in Buffalo, in Bangladesh, in India, and some places in Africa to study the, the situations and come up with more scalable solutions. So that's another research going on. And, and most of our research funding, the way in US the funding works, is really you apply, you write a proposal, you write to, the, uh, to, to different government agencies, and they fund the research. So we get funding from multiple of these agencies. We spend about $390 million per year to do the uh, research on, on the campus. Some of that is internal money, some of that is really outside money. A major emphasis on life sciences. But life sciences takes you know, everything to do with the health sciences and beyond. And then, of course, engineering has a portion of it, physical sciences, computational and information mathematical sciences. It doesn't require as much money to do research in those fields. But if you're doing a drug discovery, it's going to take a lot more money to do it. So that's why the, the differences that you can see. 
So, so this gives you a profile of uh, what's going on at, at, at our own institution in terms of research and, 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 and who is really funding it and, and why it's important. So I'm going to go through a process here now that would be a slide on, on each one of these research projects that, that might be of interest to you. I'm going to go through it whether it's of interest to you or not <laughs> but, because that's what I prepared. Uh, one thing I want you to, uh, to do though is to ask me questions. Is, is it of interest to you what I'm talking about? Is it, uh, anybody says no? <laughs> Your question? Yeah, I think that it's worth trying. These are the students, you know? Right. Like right. Is it, uh, you would say the audience would like to get into that? No, 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 no. Security it's, of life. It's security of life. It could be really uh, uh, food security, if you think about it, right? It could be the defense. I mean, there are different aspects of security. <laughs> It could be it could be terrorism. It could be you know so so really uh, any kind of security, but you know even in uh, think about terrorism, you can use the technology and research to minimize the damage or to do less of that. Right? You probably may not be able to completely uh, uh, you know sort of uh, take care of it, but the question is you know, that's an important issue. So for example, uh, uh, a couple of research going on at at at, at, at Buffalo. One is really there was a a bomb attack, uh, there was a bomb uh, thing at uh, Marathon uh, in Boston many years ago. During the marathon run, there was a bomb explosion. And, and the question is, uh, can we use technology to, to really help find out what happened and then learn from it? So you can use the computer vision technique. To, you know, people are taking pictures all over the place all the time. There are security cameras all the time. But you got tens of thousands of people, can you really identify people at that level? And yes, you can. I mean, you, you can do the features and you can... Yeah, this is easier. I know personally. Right. It's very sensitive to the communal violence. Right. I mean, it's, it's worldwide. I mean, it's one form or the other. I mean, the, the, the sort of this kind of thing exists. The question is, can we help? Of course, you are giving away some of the privacy. Right? I mean, you really have the, the, the security and privacy are so tied up. So the only secure system, when people talk about, oh, my goodness, I don't want to use this because internet is not secure, then you don't use it. The only secure system is if you're totally isolated and not connected to anybody ever. And even then it's not secure. So National Security Agency, NSA, as they call them in the U.S., actually, if you know, uh, the, the, that, that agency had uh, the, uh, the inside computers are not connected to any, anybody outside. If you want to communicate outside, you have to go outside, I mean, their own computers. Even then, Snowden had things that he had stolen, and people have that. So there's no secure system that way. So actually, but what you want to do is minimize it. So security actually has a lot, lot bigger team than, 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 than just these. It's just so happened that. Uh, the, the cyber security is touching every aspect of our life. Whether it is your personal information, your uh, financial information, your electric grid, you know, one, you know, it's all connected. One could take down the electric grid actually and we would be all without power. So, so the scale actually is much faster because we are connected so much. So any crime that happens can, can be multiplied very quickly. So that's the year. Any, any other question? Uh, yeah. So you know most of the most of the countries have uh, some level of uh, identification. Whether everything is attached to that identification or not, but you have some level of identification. For example, you know, French had that for a long time. You had to have a card. Did they introduce the concept of that actually? France is a very liberal country, but if you think about them, I mean, they have it for hundreds of years. Having your ID you've got to be identified. The uh, United States has what is known as uh, a social security number. Although the government is trying to separate the social security number from a lot of other information, 
But at the end of the day, you have to be tied to that information some level. So it's uh, uh, it depends on the implementation, you know, how you do it. But I mean, you there's no way to get out. At least you think about the amount of fraud that you can reduce by having, you know. So the story I'm told is that uh, and I said that story yesterday for those people who were here that everybody has a gas cylinder, right? And, and usually you have for family one cylinder, it's subsidized, but nobody knows how many cylinders your family has. It's the name of the children, husband, wife, the dogs, and everybody else, neighbors, sometimes the maid servants and everybody, right? So you've got as many cylinders as you want and you're getting subsidized. When Aadhaar card was uh, linked to the uh, gas cylinder subsidy, the money they save, the money the government saves, not even saying you don't get the subsidy, you can still get the subsidy, but money they save by removing the duplication. Because once it's connected to Aadhaar card, there's no way you can have other other's name and, and get your cylinder at subsidization. Enough money for the whole program for the unique ID to run for as many years as you want. So really, the wastage and the fraud that you can really uh, detect and get out is, is tremendous. Now, of course, uh, uh, from a societal viewpoint, from a privacy viewpoint,